Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see few Jinja syntax. We are going to see how we can write, you know, few commands in Jinja. We have already seen quite a lot in our previous video, but here I'm going to give you a brief introduction because after this, we are going to, you know, continue with the macros. We're trying to understand the macros, writing the macros. So before that, I want you guys to be a little more comfortable with the Jinja syntax. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, as usual, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn and as well as to subscribe to our channel in case you guys have not done so. So when we talk about, you know, few Jinja syntax, curly brackets and the sash, right? Now, this is something that we have been, in fact, writing it as well throughout. So whenever you are writing a single or a multi-line comment, in that case, you can actually use this particular symbol. So for example, let me in fact, go back to the project that we have. So here, let me in fact, try to create inside, I will, I'll go inside the my, my models folder, I'll create a new file, I'll name it as jinja.sql. I'm just going to test few lines over here. Now, now here, if I, t now if you can see over here, right? If I want to write a multi-line or a single line comment, in that case, I can actually use this curly bracket and the sash symbol. Also, if I want to, the another way to write the comment is using these dashes, right? Now, using this as well, you can actually write a comment. Now, there is a difference between both of them. Let me just simply try to save it and let me try to compile it, right? I can simply say compile my dbt model. Now, the moment I run it, you will see in the output over here. Now, to compile it like this, you should uh, like initially, you know, when we created this project, I have asked you guys to install dbt power user. We have installed dbt power users in the extensions, right? So that is coming handy over here right now. So you can see when I have compiled this code, what has happened? This comment has shown up in the compiled SQL. So the one which you have written at the first, you can't see it in the compiled SQL, but this one you can actually see in the compiled SQL. This is what the difference is. Right. And now I'll go back to the PPT. Now, apart from this particular, uh, you know, comments part, you should be aware about this comment. The other thing is expressions. Now, in this expression, you can actually see double curly brackets, right? Now, whenever we are using double curly bracket, it means we are referencing a variable that will be placed inside those curly brackets. That is what these curly brackets mean. So in fact, this also we have done multiple places. In fact, I have told this in my previous videos as well, that these double curly brackets are nothing, but these are expressions which hold the variables. Now, similarly, the third part, curly brackets and the percentage symbol. We are going to see both of these as well. Curly brackets and the percentage symbol. These you have used multiple places. You have used it to, you know, create tests as well in our DPD project. We will use this to create a set. We will use this to create a macro as well, which we will be discussing in our future videos as well. So these curly brackets are actually used for anything from if else statement to for statements to, to creating a set, to creating a macro, to creating a test, etc. And it won't be compiled in the SQL, right? Now we will see how to actually use them. So let's see how we can actually use these curly brackets and this percentage symbol. So if I go back to my uh, Jinja.sql over here and let me just put it little down over here and let me just show you this. So I told you that you can use it to create a set, to create a macro, to create a for loop, anything of that sort. Now, if you can see the curly bracket and the percentage symbol over here, right? And then here I'm saying that it is a set. Now, similarly, uh, you can also see I'm saying this is a variable. So in this, I'm writing a variable. You can keep here anything. Now this variable can be absolutely anything. This is a variable. This is how you will actually create variable over here, right? Now, let me just comment this part first. And then I will, what I'll do is I will simply say, and here I'll reference this variable into double curly brackets. And I will just paste this. Now, if you see what I have done, I have defined my variable set over here and then I'm just referencing it, trying to get it in the output, 
right now i'll just simply save it and then i'll simply compile it and run now i'll simply say compile my dbt model now the moment i do this you will see in the output how does it appear now you can see it says okay let me do one thing let me just copy this and paste it here and then again save it and then what i'll do is again i will say uh, let me just remove this and let me recompile it okay now we will see how the output of this looks like it was actually going to show you the value of this is variable right the name of the variable is this is variable and the value is you can keep here anything now you can actually see that you get the output as you can keep anything here so you are actually referencing the variable that you have set over here using this macro and to end the set you always have to put these uh, curly brackets and the percentage symbol and the keyword of end set this is exactly how it works right now this is nothing but this is how you have put the uh jinja template to create a set to create a variable and this is how you will actually reference a variable now similarly you can also create a single line set now instead of keeping it in a multi line and multi line and putting it putting over here the end set right instead of this what you can do here you can also put you can also create a set you can say list 1 is this that this is my list 1 and then it's it's in a single line so you don't need to end it so in this case again what you can do is you can reference it using again these double curly brackets let me just save it and then again i will say compile my dbt model now it will again start running it and you will see that list 1 will actually give you this particular list let me show you this output and come over here so now you can see it the first is the output that it is getting for the top and then you are actually getting the list over here so this variable list 1 becomes a variable and this becomes your expression eventually right your macro expression eventually you can actually utilize all of this in n number of ways basically if you see this this list 1 you know the output of this list 1 the the output of this um function the output of this function can actually be used inside any sql as well so if let's say if i remove this list 1 and i put a select statement over here for select for i in list 1 right so this list 1 i am actually referencing over here okay now if you see this itself is an expression i am using the list 1 over here for i in list 1 which is force 56 cloud fitness dbt right here what i am trying to do i am trying to again uh, you know uh, select all these values from this particular list and then i am trying to display my list one again over here right this is what i am trying to do now let me again try to save it and let me say compile dbt model so like this you can actually reference it as well into any sql statement and when you reference it you don't need to put Uh, you know again double curly brackets to reference the list one because it has already been created at the top now let me show you the output right now if you see the output is select 4 5 6 cloud fitness dbt so what it has done it is selecting each and every value from the list one over here so like this you can actually templateize lot of stuff you know without uh, you know it it helps you to increase the reusability of the code as well So I hope you like this particular video this is more of an introduction to the jinja templating because we will be using it we will be creating the macro so you should already know how you should create it you are going to use this expression to create a macro as well you can reference the value of a macro outside like this or you can reference the value within a select statement as well so this is what i wanted to you know uh, make you guys aware of so thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much for being till here